Hey guys, it's Mr. O'Reilly here, and uh, today we're going to talk about waves. We're going to talk about what are waves. Um, so when you think about waves, you probably think about like classic like water waves, which is what most people think of when they think of waves. Uh, that is just but one type of wave, though. There's lots and lots of different types of waves, uh, and I'm just going to tell you the basics of some of these waves. So what you're seeing down here is a GIF of um, of a wave. And if you notice, there's some peculiar things that are happening here with, uh, with waves. Uh, you can notice there's particles here uh, in red. So these are like your atoms of whatever the wave is traveling through. And then you have the wave. And if you notice, the wave is moving through whatever, you know, the atoms are. So we have uh, a bunch of different atoms here and the wave itself is traveling through all the way through. So it looks like there's constant motion. Uh, and it looks like that uh, the atoms are moving. But in fact, if you just focus on the red little pieces here, uh, you'll notice that they're not moving, they're just moving back and forth. And so that's like the main thing that we want to take away from uh, the, the beginning part of this lesson here, what are waves, is that the, the energy of the wave is what moves through whatever the object is. The object doesn't move at all. So it moves, but it never gets anywhere. So uh, we're going to take some notes today. And before we do that, I just want to uh, just go through how I want you to do that. So I'm going to share uh, my screen with you and I'll tell you what you need to do. So along with this video, uh, you're going to get uh, this companion, What Are Waves Notes Google Doc. And as we move through the uh, different slides, just like in class, uh, what you're going to do is uh, you are going to uh, just type a, type whatever it is that I'm typing as well, because I'll be typing on my, um, on my flip chart as well. So uh, I tried to make it so everything was in a table form. So when I tell you what way, how waves move, you can just either pause or you can just listen. Uh, and I'll try to talk slowly so you can understand me. But um, you just type it right in here. So whatever it is that I say, not as but whatever it is that I'm typing, you go ahead and type it too. Um, here you can um, delete the little blank line and just type in a sentence. That's fine too. Uh, if you want to do it your way, you do, you do whatever way feels comfortable. Uh, this chart has some things on it too. Uh, you could just put the blanks underneath here. Uh, when we get to this, I'm gonna show you how to make a drawing uh, using Google Docs. So you can have a drawing in here of some waves that you've drawn. Uh, we're gonna write some stuff in here. And then finally, there's one little part here uh, that we're gonna transfer to this table right here. So we have electromagnetic waves, and then I just copied it down here so you could write on the right side here, okay? So while you're listening to me talk, have this out and open so you can kind of follow along like we do in class, okay? And then you can have this forever and it'll be great. All right, so let's get back to uh, my flip chart and what I was talking about here. So uh, this is new for me. Um, I'm gonna try to be typing in here in my little text boxes. Um, if something doesn't work out or something seems like, you know, it's a little weird, you're just gonna have to bear with me for a little bit because um, I'm still trying to figure this out too. So uh, we'll do the best we can. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll get better with time, but um, for now, uh, let's talk about waves. So uh, waves, uh, like I said, waves are energy. Uh, and they're the, the movement of energy through an object. So uh, when we're talking about waves, waves have special characteristics, and we'll get into uh, that deeper in a little bit, but uh, let's just talk about the really basics of the basics. So I'm gonna use purple. Um, so how do waves move? Well, waves move in all directions. So uh, why isn't that purple? There we go. Okay, so waves move in all directions. Um, there, uh, so if you make a wave, like uh, like if you throw a rock, like in a pond, or um, you know, you make a wave that way, you'll notice that it moves out in a circular direction, right? Like 360 degrees. Um, 
So uh, it's not just a one directional, it's all directions because we live in a 3D space, right? Uh, what do waves do? Well, basically, if we want to boil it down to one thing, uh, waves transfer, transfer, transfer energy. So again, if you notice the GIF down below, uh, you can see that the wave, the energy is moving through whatever this object is. We don't know what it is because it's just dots, but we can imagine it could be a, uh, a spring or we could imagine it could be water. We could imagine it could even be solid objects like the earth. Uh, it could be anything. We don't know what it is, but we do know that the wave, the energy is traveling all the way through uh, to the other side. And remember, it's moving in all directions too. So even though this is only a 2D image, uh, we can imagine that the wave is moving upwards, downwards, uh, that it's moving uh, left and right, all in all different directions. So uh, what do they not do? Well, if they transfer energy, well, the opposite of that is matter and they do not transfer matter. So, like I said, uh, to open this video, uh, if you, you look at the red particles here, you can see that they move, they shake, they vibrate as the vibrations of the wave move through the object, but uh, it never gets anywhere, right? So the particle just kind of moves back and forth and back and forth, and that's about it. So uh, the matter overall isn't moving anywhere. It's just kind of staying in the same spot overall. And so that's like the real basics of the basics. But let's talk about uh, the next thing here, which is uh, mechanical waves. So we're going to talk about specific types of waves. So uh, this is the uh, the next part of your notes here, so you should be here now. So mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are kind of cool, and that's going to be the wave that we're going to be focused on probably more than any other kind of wave. Uh, but mechanical waves are waves that require a medium. Uh, to pass through. So they need some kind of uh, matter in order to propagate and in order to pass through. So like, for example, water waves need water to pass through. Sound waves doesn't seem like they would need anything to pass through, but indeed they need air to pass through. And they can pass through other materials as well. Seismic waves typically pass through the earth during earthquakes, like your S wave and your uh, P wave of an earthquake. Uh, but uh, a medium, I'm just going to put this little note down here. Is any material that a wave passes through? This is like when I write on the board and I can't write and talk at the same time. So a medium is any material that a wave passes through. So water waves pass through water, sound waves pass through air, seismic waves pass through uh, the, the earth, the uh, crust of the earth. So those are the three examples that I'm going to use. Water, sound waves, and seismic waves. So there are other types of waves, but those are just kind of like the most uh, recognizable of your waves. Excuse me, I'm just gonna. <clears throat> All right, so here's your uh, water waves down here, your sound waves passing through the air to your ear. And we're gonna talk about sound waves a little bit more in depth as we uh, uh, move along here through the waves unit. Um, so that's it for mechanical waves. Uh, mechanical waves just require a medium to pass through. Um, so this uh, little uh, this little slide isn't on your notes, but uh, I didn't want to get rid of it because I like it. Uh, so we'll just talk about it real quick. So uh, the media through which mechanical waves can travel that just means the matter. So we want to know what kind of matter that mechanical waves can travel through. Uh, you might have heard the tagline in Aliens, uh, in space, no one can hear you scream. And that's absolutely true because space uh, doesn't have any matter in it. Uh, so there's, it's just empty, there's nothing. So if we're talking about 
mechanical waves and one of our mechanical waves we said was sound waves right here uh, they require a, a medium and so that medium can be anything any kind of matter it doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter what kind uh, of matter we're talking about uh, but any kind of matter uh, works for waves so the only thing that mechanical waves can't travel through is empty space so we'll just strike that one out uh, there are some waves that can travel through empty space um, and i'm sure some of you are probably thinking about that now uh, but there are some kind of waves that can travel through empty space and those would be your electromagnetic waves uh, those don't require a medium they can travel through space they could travel through whatever they can travel through matter as well like light uh, light is uh, an obvious one the light from the sun reaches us so it has to be able to travel through that uh, empty space the vacuum space space but sound sound cannot travel through it requires a medium uh, of a solid a liquid or a gas for sound most commonly uh, that's going to be air the the atmosphere that surrounds us all right next up so how are waves produced well the key word here is going to be vibrations so if we're looking at our notes we're now down to this one okay so you can fill in the boxes right here one two and three uh, as i type them in okay so uh, how are waves produced it's all about vibrations so when we're talking about waves uh, we're talking about a, a, a type of energy that is produced when something vibrates so when you like for example say you tap on a drum like a percussion instrument when you tap on the drum you create a vibration and that vibration creates sound uh, same thing for how i'm talking to you right now uh, my voice is creating uh, vibrations of my vocal cords in my throat which are then being pushed through the air the medium and then uh, they're going to through the air uh, through uh, to your ear and then you're hearing them you're hearing my voice speak so uh, each separate vibration produces a wave uh, so each vibration each little tap on the drum is going to produce its own separate wave and if we can like visualize that it would look something like this at the top here or something like this at the bottom here you can see the wave vibration nothing vibration nothing vibration nothing and so those vibrations move kind of in a rhythmic pattern in a in a slow steady pattern well slow relative to other things uh, but in a slow steady pattern towards out in all directions and so you can focus those waves like if you have a speaker uh, those waves are going to be focused towards one direction, but this that's not the whole picture. They actually radiate out in like all directions. And so uh, the, those waves, those, they don't stop. Like when you tap, uh, you know, on your drum or you start speaking, uh, your wave doesn't, the sound doesn't stop right when you stop talking right it takes a little bit of time to get to its destination so those waves keep moving uh, even after the vibration stops so our three words here in your note should be vibrates vibration and vibration so the the key takeaway here is how are waves produced they're produced by a, a vibration uh, some kind of disturbance in the medium that's going to produce those waves and so like i said if you're talking about water if you talk about like water waves well then the vibration is going to be from whatever is causing the waves like if you throw a rock into a pond uh, or you know just the natural uh, wind currents that uh, make waves in the open ocean and that kind of thing storms whatever it happens to be is going to produce those vibrations which is going to produce a wave which is again a kind of energy all right now here comes the fun part so uh, I'm gonna have you uh, draw and label some waves for me so there's two types of mechanical waves that we want to talk about there's a wave called transverse waves and then we have a different type of wave called longitudinal waves and so uh, I don't it's not a big deal I don't want you to get too stressed over it but uh, when we visualize waves we can visualize them in one of two ways we can visualize them as a transverse wave here or we can visualize them as a longitudinal wave like this and there's a little 
uh, bow attached to that, and I'll get to why that is in a little bit. Uh, but transverse waves and longitudinal waves have their own um, anatomy, so to speak. They have their own parts. And so uh, the, the biggest part uh, of this lesson is, is learning the word transverse versus longitudinal, and then being able to differentiate between the two and being able to label them. And we're gonna be working on that on Thursday and Friday as well. So don't worry if you're, if you're already confused. They're big words, so we'll take it nice and easy. So for transverse waves, uh, here's what I want you to do. So uh, in this box right here, I'm gonna have you draw a transverse wave. And the way that you're gonna do that uh, is if you click up here to insert and then drawing, you can click new and it'll open this little like sub uh, page for you. And in that little sub page, you can click on the line and you can click on the curve and you can uh, make a curve. So I'm gonna make a curve like this and like this, and you can kind of use the uh, check boxes there to like keep it kind of neat. So I'm just gonna make some waves real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then when you're done, you just click a bunch of times and then it'll stop. Hopefully, come on, there we go. Uh, so what I want you to do is then take a line and then just draw a line right through the middle, okay? So then uh, you click on a, the text box here. And if you click on the text box, Actually, let's, well, no, let's, let's do text box first. So if we do a text box, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you the uh, important words you need to know for transverse waves, okay? So uh, for transverse waves, you need to know the word crest. And you need to know the word trough. And you need to know the word resting point. Get out of here, capital. Okay, so your crest, the crest of a transverse wave is the very, very top of the wave, okay? So put your crest right at the top and then just draw a little tiny line, right? pointing to the top, okay? The very, very tip top, all right? And then what you wanna do uh, is take your trough, and if the crest is the very, very top of the wave, then the trough is the very, very bottom, okay? So put your trough somewhere at the bottom here, and then draw a line that just goes to the bottom, the very bottom, not here, not here, not here, but very bottom and crest very top. And then I'm sure you can guess uh, the resting point. We'll get rid of this and this one and this one and this one. Uh, the resting point is when uh, the wave isn't moving at all. So if I wasn't making any disturbances or any vibrations through this medium, then the resting point is where uh, this, this, what these lines would be. So the resting point is right here. I love how that red line is like almost perfect. That's cool. So the resting point is when when the there's no vibrations through your wave and nothing is happening, okay? So you should have crest at the top, trough at the bottom, and resting point right here. And then you can hit save and close. And then if it's uh, if it's not in your transverse wave drawing, it'll be somewhere. Uh, and if it's like up here, you can just move it into the box, okay? And then you'll have it right there. So there's your transverse wave, isn't that nice? So you got a nice transverse wave. We got up and down motion, uh, the vibrations moving through your medium and your troughs at the bottom while your crest is at the top. So uh, 
if we go back to my transverse wave here, I'll label this one as well. So again, we have the crest. Whoa. We have the crest. I'll fix it here. Size 40. There we go. We have the crest here, and we have the trough at the bottom here. And of course, this is going to be your resting point where there is no movement or vibration of your wave, okay? So uh, not too bad, not too big of a deal. Uh, if you need to like pause and rewind and go back or you need a little time to make your drawing or to label it, go ahead and do that. Pause, rewind the video. Make sure you have the uh, components labeled correctly, okay? So uh, we'll move on to longitudinal wave when you're ready. And so for longitudinal wave, if I go back up here, uh, I'm gonna click in the box again. I'm gonna go to insert drawing new. And now I'm gonna draw with my curve a uh, compression wave or a, um, sorry, a longitudinal wave. So this one's gonna be a little uh, bit trickier, but do your best. So I'm just gonna like go crazy. And I'm gonna draw some curves that are like really close together. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Close together. And then draw some that are kind of spread out a little bit. You can make them small. I feel like I'm Bob Ross. Use just some happy curves. And then just do it one more time. Draw some that are really close together. And then some that are kind of farther apart. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but there you go. So let me get rid of that, delete. And let's make some text box. So for uh, compression waves or longitudinal waves, uh, there are, again, there's two things that you need to know about uh, longitudinal waves. And one word that you need to know is the word compression, which is why I sometimes call them compression waves, uh, because that is the, uh, the main feature of a longitudinal wave. And the compressions, as you could probably guess, are the areas where the spring, what looks like a spring, is close together, whatever it is that is um, being compressed, being vibrated, uh, is the compression part of that wave. And then the other part, which is kind of a harder word to learn, is rarefaction. And so a rarefaction, if I can make this smaller here, a rarefaction is the opposite. It's the part of a wave uh, that is spread out in the longitudinal wave. So this is actually how a sound wave works. So when my voice is projecting and causing vibrations in the air, the air will become compressed where I have vibrated the air and in an opposite force, the rarefaction, the uh, expansion of the air will be that rarefaction in that longitudinal wave. So go ahead and uh, hit save and close. And you can see that it will end up in the longitudinal wave box right there, okay? So there we go. There's transverse versus longitudinal waves. And so if we look at how transverse versus longitudinal waves work, uh, what you'll see is that they move in similar but different ways. And if you'll notice, none of the particles are, they're, they're moving, but they're not moving in any kind of, you know, set fashion. They're just wobbling back and forth and then going back to their resting point, which is uh, one of our vocab words. So if we're talking about transverse waves, and now if you are taking notes, you are down here in these boxes, okay? So if we're talking about transverse waves, uh, what we're talking about is particle motion in the up and down. 
So you can see here, here's the transverse wave with the crest up here and the trough down here. So crest, trough, crest, trough, and it's wiggling back and forth like that. And we have particle motion in the up to down to the crest and trough. And then of course, they're gonna go back to their original position once these vibrations stop, okay? Uh, for a longitudinal wave or a compression wave, we have particle motion in the left to right. So that's your compression and rarefaction. Rare Just fix that. But remember, for both the particles always go back to resting point for both of these guys. So the particles always go back to the resting point. Matter is not transferred. Matter can move, but matter is not transferred. What is transferred? Well, your energy, okay? So your wave, if you follow this arrow, your wave has net motion, okay? Hey, Thor. So if you're looking at the at the wave, you're looking at the energy being uh, the the motional object here, the motional uh, concept. Uh, waves aren't object; they're energy. Uh, so we have waves moving, particles or waves being transferred, I should say, waves being transferred and particles moving, but always going back to the resting point. That's like the really important thing, okay? All right, last but not least. So with our uh, electromagnetic waves, uh, if you're keeping up with notes, that's not what I want. If you're keeping up with notes, your electromagnetic waves are on the third page here uh, and you can write uh, what I'm writing right in here, right? So uh, we talked about mechanical waves and mechanical waves need energy or uh, need a medium uh, to, to pass through. Electromagnetic waves are special because they don't. Uh, electromagnetic waves can travel through anything. They could travel through solids, they could travel through liquids, they could travel through gases. And if they don't have anything to travel through, then they're still gonna travel through. So they can travel through the vacuum of space. They can travel through anything. Uh, and so we're not gonna focus too much on electromagnetic waves right now. We're gonna focus on mechanical waves, uh, but we'll get back to electromagnetic waves uh, uh, momentarily, maybe next week or the week after when we talk about light. So uh, light is an electromagnetic wave. Uh, and so these electromagnetic waves uh, they're on what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. And if I can just make this a little bit bigger, you can see there's on a spectrum, you have different sizes of your waves. And so on the spectrum of waves, you have very, very large waves. So here's our wavelength in meters, it's like thousand meters long, uh, our wave is each vibration. You have your radio waves, which is like as big as a soccer field. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have your uh, soft and hard X-rays, which are about the size of a water molecule at 10 to the negative 10 uh, meters for each vibration. So you can have very, very large waves and you can have very, very, very small waves. You can run the gamut of, of, of sizes. Even uh, me mechanical waves, they can be very small or they can be very large. Like think about a small wave, like when you throw a, a rock into a pond, that's a small wave versus like a tsunami wave, which can be very, very large. So electromagnetic waves, uh, those are also uh, very large to very small. Um, and so electromagnetic waves get looked over a lot. And the reason they get looked over a lot is literally because you can't see them. We see in a very, very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. If you can see here, visible light, all the light that humans can see is just this very small band 
of the electromagnetic spectrum. Everything below it and everything above it, we can't see, but they're still there and they still have functions. Like obviously x-rays are useful to us. Microwaves are useful to us. Radio waves are useful to us. Uh, all those things are useful. We just can't see them, but they're still there and they're still producing energy and they're transferring energy while they're not transferring matter. And that's what's important. And so these electromagnetic waves, uh, they carry energy, and that energy is oftentimes called a radiant energy, which is a really cool name for electromagnetic energy. Um, so uh, they travel through any kind of matter and also empty space. So they're that, they're that exception to the rule. So your mechanical waves are what needs a medium, uh, but the uh, electromagnetic spectrum does not require a medium. It can go through empty space. Um, they are emitted by every single object. So every object produces some kind of waves and you're probably thinking, well, I am an object, I'm a kind of matter, do I produce electromagnetic waves? And the answer is yes, you do, you absolutely do because you are a living being and you go through uh, cellular processes just like everything else does. Uh, so you indeed uh, produce electromagnetic radiation in the infrared. And so that is uh, the, the, uh, the wave of heat. So when you produce heat rays or heat waves from your body, that is electromagnetic radiation. So everything produces electromagnetic uh, radiation or radiant energy. So what are some examples of electromagnetic waves? Well, the big example is light. Uh, light is the biggest uh, and most obvious example of electromagnetic radiation because we can see it and because we know the sun emits energy and it emits light and we know it has to go through space because it's 90 million miles away from us. So light is one of those electromagnetic uh, waves that, uh, that is very, very common. Uh, another is x-rays. So like when you break a bone and you need to get an x-ray, well, that's a type of electromagnetic radiation that they're using to, to view your bones through your skin, uh, which is a very useful tool to use. Uh, another one is microwaves. Uh, and microwaves are just what you think they are. They're the uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation or the radiant energy that is uh, produced when a microwave is used to heat your food, uh, which microwaves are very good at making water molecules vibrate. They, the medium is water. And so the microwaves make the water vibrate, which heats up your food. So again, uh, electromagnetic radiation using that energy for, for good use. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's it for our notes. I did have some extra stuff here. Uh, but I've been talking a long time and my voice is really sore now. Um, so I haven't talked this much to anyone in a long time. But I appreciate you listening. If you want to hear more, if you want to know more, let me know. And maybe I can do another one of these or a follow-up. Uh, but let me know. And uh, I hope that was helpful.